Welcome back, Pete Heads. So in my last video, I reviewed the Lafroy 2022 Karchis Warehouse Number no. One release, and I think it's a really good whiskey. A little bit expensive, but compared to other Karchis releases, very happy to see them using a straightforward bourbon maturation, and I really like it. So in my last video, I said to avoid disappointment, don't compare this to the much higher strength 10-year-old cask strength release. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I was thinking after I did that review, I do think I have tasted these head to head before, and I do think that this one's got a lot more power than this year's Karchus. Understandably, because it's a much higher ABV, we're looking at 58.6 compared to the Karchus at 52.2, so that makes a big difference. But I think that this video, this AB head to head comparison is worth doing because it's going to be something that a lot of people are going to be wondering about. Because if you're looking at buying the Karchus, you can usually get the 10 cask strength quite a bit cheaper. They, this year at least, they are a kind of similar thing. So a lot of people are going to be wondering is this worth buying or do you just stick with this one? So let's get some in the glass and find out. That's the Karchus. And let's put that away. Too much stuff out otherwise. So we've got quite a bit of the, the batch 14 left. Kind of surprised that they haven't come out with a batch 15 yet. Because the gap between the 13 and 14 was very brief. I think it was only about six months. And it's been a few months since the batch 14 came out now. Probably been nearly a year, I think. So we'll probably see the batch 15 very soon. And like I said in the, the video for the batch 14, I'm really hoping that the downwards trend of being more rounded and sweet and less aggressive is going to end and we'll get a really ballsy batch 15. But we'll have to see with that one. So two glasses, one dram of the cartridge and one of the 10 CS from the most recent release. And the first thing you can see with these is even on camera with different colours in the backgrounds, it's hard to see really. But you can easily see that the 10 cask strength is much, much darker than what we're getting on the cartridge from this year. So neither of these say that they're natural colour and we know that the 10 cask strength is usually non-chill filtered although they don't always say so because it's Laphroaig and they don't care and think that we don't need to know but enough about that. But the, the cartridge that doesn't say natural colour either but I would almost bet money that that is natural colour Laphroaig after around about 10 years and that's what we're getting with the cask strength. So what you're seeing there is about the amount of colouring that we're getting in the average Laphroaig release. The difference between those two is what they're polluting their whiskey with. That's what they're adding in. So let's get right on with the, the AB comparison. I'm going to start off with the Laphroaig 10 um, cask strength batch 14. It's going to be very easy to keep track of which one is which because they look entirely different, even though they shouldn't. So the Freud 10 cask strength batch 14 on the nose. So unmistakably the Freud, all those wonderful flavours that you normally get from the 10 cask strength. Although, as I said in the review for this, it's distinctly rounded. You're getting a strong sweetness to this whiskey. And it's, in my opinion, it's a very almost sanitized, overly sweet, cloying caramel. You're getting all those phenolics. It's smoky. It's reasonably medicinal. It's a lovely whiskey. It's worth buying for the price. It is good value. But compared to previous 10 cask strength releases, it's very simple, overly sweet, overly rounded. So let's switch to the Karchus. <clears throat> so this is the Karchus 2022, which is matured in 100% first-fill Maker's Mark casks. 
immediately. It's a much more expressive whiskey. I think that the nose on the carcass, it's less smoky, it's less phenolic, it's less medicinal. But ignoring the fact that these are Laphroaig and ignoring what you expect from a Laphroaig, I think that the Karchus is a better all-round smoky whiskey. And I'd say that the, they're both sweet, very sweet, considering that they're bourbon-matured peated Isle of Scotch. But the sweetness that you're getting on the nose of the Karchus, it's more of a honeyed sweetness. It's less rounded. It's less cloying. I think it tones down the complexity of the whiskey less than it does on the nose of the 10 cask strength. I think that the nose on the Karchus, as I said in the review, you're getting much more of that toasted, seasoned oak cask note, much more contribution from the barley, and it's a much more complex whiskey. Let's move on to the palate. So probably cask strength, 10 year old first. The colour of that one just looks absolutely ridiculous. It does anyway, but compared to the, the carches, you can see how much crap they're putting in there. But on the palate, 10 cask strength, although it is a sweeter and more rounded version of the 10 cask strength, it's still those wonderful flavours that we all know and love. It's got plenty of those phenolic notes. It's got plenty of power. And I am concerned that when I go on to the Karchus, it's going to be a noticeable step down just in the intensity of the flavours. Because there is plenty of power on the 10 cask strength. Although, as I said before, it's very sweet, cloying, and it's just that bit simple. You just need more edges on this whiskey. That's what I think anyway. So going on to the Karchus which is a much more sensible colour for whiskey, for anyone that knows. So, almost goes without saying that when you go between these two, the nose, it doesn't make that much difference in terms of power and intensity, but on the palate, it's kind of like tasting the same whiskey, but this one has got a teaspoon and a half of water added to it, which is a shame. And that's why I said, don't do what I'm doing, because it highlights, it doesn't really highlight anything apart from the fact that they've added water to the carches. They've made it weaker and it's simple as that. But the palette on this one, especially if I'd have tasted this first, I think, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it. You're getting lots of smoky notes. And as I said before, it really has a better sense of a well-made smoky whiskey. It's not all just about those punch in the face, heavy phenolic notes. It's much more rounded, much complex, all rounder smoky whiskey. And in particular, I think that with Karchus, you get more of an effect from the barley. There's more maltiness, sweet and fruity malty notes. And I think that you also get more of that salinity that they picked up on the label and the marketing for the Karchus. It is a more salty, briny, bracing, very enjoyable, salty Isla whiskey. Has to be said, though, there is less power on the Karchus. Although I think that if you weren't doing an AB comparison, you probably wouldn't notice it. What I really like about the Karchus, though, is that it's definitely, undoubtedly, a more complex whiskey than the 10 cask strength. I think that this Karchus from this year is probably the better whiskey for people that have been around Laphroaig a bit. They've gone through quite a few bottles of Laphroaig, and they want something that really stands out, something different, that's not a million miles away from what you're used to and what you expect and love, but just something that showcases those multi notes a little bit more than you normally get from the 10 cask strength. I think that the operative term really is that the Karchus is more expressive. It has more to say and there's more nuance and more flavours to pick out there. There's just more to see, more to taste. And I think that a large part of that is probably that they've been able to be more selective and they've really cherry picked the casks that go into this Karchus. So I really think it, it's basically what you would expect and what you would want comparing these two. The 10 cask strength is that little bit ballsier in a way. 
although the Karchis is that bit more nuanced and that bit more interesting. So going back to the Karchis, or Blue Stripe Warehouse number one, should you buy this year's Karchis? I mean, if you haven't already, then you've probably doubled or tripled the price of what you're going to have to pay for this at secondary because it's probably sold out by now I'd imagine. But in my opinion if you see this and it's a fair price yes you probably should buy it. If you're a Laphroaig fan then you're not going to be disappointed because it is very very good. Is it better than the 10 cask strength compared to the batch 14? I'm going to say yeah it probably is. Is it better value than the 10 cask strength? That's a bit more of a difficult question. I think that if money really matters, then probably stick with the 10 cask strength because you're getting a similar-ish experience at a noticeably lower price point. If you're on a really tight budget and you still want kind of the best whiskey that you can get for your money, I'd probably say probably avoid both of these because there are whiskies that are as high quality as both of these unless you specifically want those Laphroaig flavours from other distilleries and you guys know what I'm going to recommend if you want the absolute best bang for your buck smoky Isla or Isla style whiskey you need to be looking at the the cheaper bottles from the Ardbeg lineup so things like the Ardbeg 10 absolutely absolute bargain of a smoky whiskey probably wee beastie as well and other than that, for your smoky whiskies on a budget, definitely check out Macca Bay. It's an incredible whiskey for the money. Le Chig 10-year-old. And, of course, Port Charlotte, which is also an Isla whiskey. Because that short list there, in my opinion, that's probably the best bang for your buck that you're going to get out of smoky whiskey. If you do have a little bit of spare money, though, and you're looking for something a little bit special, then I'd recommend either of these, really. Obviously, there are some reservations on the 10-year-old that I went through in my review for that. But both fantastic whiskies that are reasonably good value. So I'm going to go off and enjoy both of these two now. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about these if you've had either or both of them. And I'll see you next time. Cheers.